Does St. Peter the Apostle have the keys to the kingdom? It's common for believers and non-believers alike to begin humorous stories with reference to St. Peter and the pearly gates. Where did this reference come from? Is Peter the Apostle the gatekeeper to heaven? Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 16. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the kings of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. At first glance, it appears that Jesus just told Peter that he would decide who gets into heaven and who does not, making him forever the gatekeeper of heaven. Could this be true? Should we be praying for Peter's favor so when we die, he will not lock us out of the kingdom of heaven? I don't think that's at all what Jesus was saying here. What is salvation anyway? Is it for the perfecting of life on earth or deliverance from the fires of hell? I can assure you, brothers and sisters, salvation is deliverance from the condemnation of sin and death. Salvation is deliverance from hell. Hell is a real place that's a destination for all who reject Jesus Christ and his message and offer of salvation. The decision for accepting the free gift of salvation in Christ is available only to the living. Go with me to the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abram's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in his flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. In the book of Luke, chapter 16, we see a rich man who died and woke up in hell. He saw Lazarus over in paradise and begged for a cool drink of water. At this time, there was a holding place called Abram's bosom. It's believed that this portion of scripture referred to a time before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. At that time, the way to heaven was not yet open, and there was a temporary holding place for those who died in the faith. Once Christ died on the cross, the temple veil was ripped in two, signifying open access to the Holy of Holies. This opened up the path into the very presence of God. When Christ died on the cross, was buried and resurrected, access to heaven was opened to all who believed and died in Christ. The rich man in our story begged Abraham to send resurrected Lazarus to his family to warn them of hell. The rich man wanted to make sure they didn't make the same mistake he had made, rejecting salvation before he died. Abraham told him that it was futile 
to send a ghost to witness to his family members. He said if they do not believe the testimony of Moses and the prophets, they could not even be persuaded if someone rose from the dead. One thing I want you to notice, at no time did Peter's name come up concerning heaven or hell, or who gets in or out. So what did Jesus actually mean when he told Peter he would give unto him the keys to the kingdom? Jesus was speaking on the revelation that Peter just received when he realized that Jesus was the Christ, the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ is the one who came to save his people from their sins. Each and every human being that's ever lived has had a choice to believe in God and trust in Christ in faith, or to doubt the truth of the gospel and reject salvation. The Old Testament saints looked forward to the cross in faith. The New Testament saints looked upon the cross. The believers of today look backward to the cross in faith. When Christ revealed himself to Peter and the rest of the apostles, he revealed himself as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This revelation gave the knowledge or keys to the kingdom to all who heard the gospel of peace and received its truth by faith. Everyone who hears the gospel today is given opportunity to receive the keys to the kingdom by faith. The keys to the kingdom are simply the gospel, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Peter and the apostles had the power to give or to let loose the gospel to others, or to bind or to withhold the gospel from others. Peter eventually became the apostle to the circumcised, which were the Jews. And Paul the apostle took the message to the Gentiles. So to answer our original question, does St. Peter have the keys to the kingdom of heaven? Yes, he does, in the sense that he received and understood the gospel, received Jesus as his savior, and reserved his place in the kingdom of heaven. Contrary to popular belief, Peter does not stand at the pearly gates, granting access or denying access to souls who die in attempt to get into heaven. The choice for heaven or hell is made on earth while you're still alive. Once you die, the choice has been made. You no longer have the option of changing your mind or begging St. Peter to have mercy on you. Have you reserved your place in heaven already?